Hello and welcome to this video on similar shapes. We can tell that two or more shapes are similar if one is an enlargement of the other. So there might also be an, a reflection involved, which is a flip or a mirror, and there might also be a rotation involved, which is a turn, but ultimately two or more shapes are similar if one is enlarged to become the other. Um, there's a video on scale factor that will start to explain some of the sort of beginnings of similar shapes um, and that might be useful for you to watch now. So let's have a look at this first example. I'll make it full screen so we can see it properly. Um, on the left hand side, six shapes are drawn on the grid of squares. One of the shapes is similar to shape F. So when we use similar in maths, it means one is an enlargement of the other. So shape F is on the right hand side. Um, it's 10 squares high, I can see its base is four squares along. It's got a mid height, hasn't it, of six squares where it's got that wide bit. And then it's got a narrow bit with a height of four squares. I could go along and I could measure all of those sides. Now, one of these other shapes, A to E, is going to be similar to shape F. That means all of its sides are gonna still be in the same proportions as they are to each other in shape F. Now, if I have a look at F, I can see that the wide part is taller than the narrow part. So if I have a look at the shapes on the left, I want, I'm want i only bothered about the shapes that have a longer, wider part than they do narrow part. I can see the shapes on the left hand side, so A, C and D, all have the wide base part that is actually shorter than the narrow part at the top. Now I can say that they're not going to be in the same proportion as shape F because shape F has a taller wide base so that isn't the case for shapes A, C and D. That leaves me with shapes B and E. Now just by looking at that you might be able to see which one is similar to shape F. Um, as you can see in shape E the wide part is much longer in proportion to the rest of the shape than it is in shape F. I could also do this now by measuring. As we said, the height of shape F is five squares long. And if we just look at that wide bit, the height of that is six squares long. Now, if we look at shape B, I can see it's a rotation as well. It's been turned round. So the right hand side of shape F, that 10 squares tall part, has now become, through its rotation, that top side of B which is five squares long. So I can see to get me from shape F to shape B I must be dividing all of my sides by two. So I'll check with this six square side as well. So in shape F I've got that height of six squares um, from the bottom and I'll half that which gives me three. Now shape B has that side that is three squares. It's now along the base because it's been rotated but it has that side that is three squares. Shape E doesn't have that anywhere. It's got a side that's four squares, but not a side that's three squares. So I can't say that shape E is in proportion to shape F, therefore it's not similar. The only shape on there that is similar to shape B, or to shape F, sorry, is B. So B is your answer for the first one. Have a look at the question on the right hand side. Have a go at that one yourself. Pause this video if you need a little bit more time and we'll have a look at the answer. Okay, we are looking for the shape that is similar to shape A. Now this one might be a little bit clearer. Um, shape A is a square. There is only one other square shape on that grid. So B, C, D and E are all still rectangles but they haven't kept their same proportion. In a square we know all the sides are the same length as they are in A. We can't say that about shapes B, C, D and E. They've stopped having all of their sides the same length. Shape E is the only one there that is still in proportion and that is actually exactly the same shape. So your answer to the question on the right will be shape E. Let's check our answer to see that that's correct. Okay, let's have a look at another example. So. 
the orange shapes on the left hand side, I am given three measurements of those and also one of the sides that I don't know, they've called it X. So I'm looking to find a scale factor and that'll help me work out the missing side in that shape. So in order to find a scale factor, I need a pair of corresponding sides. That means I need a numerical value or a number on the same side of each shape. So in this case, it is the top side. I know both of the lengths. I know that the small one is four and the, the big one is 12. So I should be able to work out a scale factor there. So a scale factor to get me from the small shape to the big shape, that tells me how many times bigger the big shape is or the sides of the big shape are. I'm gonna do my scale factor. Now's a good time to watch the scale factor video if you haven't done so already. I'm gonna take the length of 12 and I'm going to divide it by 4. I'm seeing how many 4s go into 12, how many times bigger are the lengths of the big shape. I do that division and it gets me 3. So it's not 3 centimetres longer, it doesn't mean that x is 3, it just means that my scale factor is 3. So all the lengths of my bigger shape are 3 times longer than the lengths of my smaller shape. So I'm now looking to find the length x. Now in this question, x is on the smaller shape. I know its corresponding side is 15 centimetres. So x has been enlarged by our scale factor to give us 15. So something, which x is, times by 3 gives me 15, or 15 is 3 times bigger than whatever x might be. So if I take my 15 and divide by my scale factor, that's telling me how many lots of my scale factor go into 15. That'll tell me the length of my missing side. I do that calculation and it gives me 5. Now this is a side. That means I can give it units. I'm going to call it 5 centimetres and that is the length of that side. Um, if you wanted to, you could have done it with x in it as well, and you could have said that x times by 3, my scale factor, gives me 15. You still end up doing the same sum because you've got to divide both sides by 3. And I do 15 divided by 3, so I end up doing the same sum, and that gives me 5. So x is my missing side. It is in centimetres so I can put units on my question. Do a reality check as well. Think, am I looking for a side that is bigger or smaller than the one that I've got in my question? Well, in this case, I was looking for a side on the small shape. So my answer, five, should be smaller than its corresponding length, 15. So do a sense check um, when you get your answers. What I'd like you to do now is have a look at the questions on the right-hand side. So for the rectangles, now they're shown the other way around, but you are still looking for a length on the smaller shape. So pause the video now to give yourself a bit of time and we'll have a look at the answer. Okay, let's have a look at the answer to that question. So I want to find the scale factor first of all. I need two corresponding sides. My two corresponding sides in this case are the left hand side, so the height. To tell me how many times bigger the sides of the big shape are than the small shape are, I do my division. So I'm going to do 3 divided by 1. They're the two corresponding sides that I've got. Well, dividing something by 1 just leaves it as itself. That is my scale factor. That is how many times bigger the lengths are on the big shape. So I know that from, from the small shape, I need to times x by 3 and it gives me 12. So I can write it like this again. And it gives me 12. I know that 12 is 3 times bigger than whatever x is. That's from the small shape. So I'm hoping that x is going to come out as a smaller number than 12. To get x on its own, I can divide by 3, which this is the sum that I'm doing. So I'm doing 12 divided by 3. I'm left with x over here. 12 divided by 3 is 4. That is a length, so I can put centimetres on it. 
and it is smaller than 12. That makes sense, it's from the smaller shape. So do a reality check on your answer to see that whether you have a, a longer side or a shorter side. Let's check that our answers are correct there. Okay, let's have a look at example three then. So triangles A, B, C and P, Q, R are similar. So that means one's an enlargement of the other. That means I can work out a scale factor. Work out the length of Q, R. So that's the base of the triangle on the right hand side, which is the bigger triangle. So first of all, I need to find out a scale factor. So I look for my corresponding sides. Well, I can see that the left hand side of both triangles, I've been given um, a dimension for both of those. So the small one is 12 and the big one is 16. So if I want to work out a scale factor, I know that I can take the length of the longer side and divide it by the length of the shorter side and that'll tell me how many times bigger the lengths of the big triangle are. So I'm going to do 16 divided by 12. Um, now 12 doesn't go into 16 a whole number of times so I can either leave it as a fraction in its simplest form which is four thirds um, or if I wanted to I could leave it as a decimal but that gives me 1.3 recurring which is 1.3333 and those threes carry on forever. So that is my scale factor. I'm going to leave it in a fraction there just because it's a little bit neater. So that is how many times the big triangle is more than the small triangle. So we're looking for the length of QR, so that's the base on the big triangle. So I know that I'm going to have to multiply the length of the small triangle by my scale factor to give me the length of my big triangle. So the base of the small triangle is 15. So I'm going to take the base of my small triangle and I'm going to scale it up. So I'm going to times it by my scale factor. So I'm timesing it by four thirds or by 1.3 recurring. I can either do that on my calculator um, or I can do it as a fraction multiplication. And that gives me 20. Now that is a length, which means that it will have units. So I'll put that it is 20 centimeters. I do my reality check and make sure that because it's on the big shape, that the answer that I get 20 is bigger than its corresponding side 15, which in this case it is. So I have found the increased size. So my answer to that one is 20 centimetres. I'd like you to have a look at the question on the right hand side. Um, so it's very similar. You've got two triangles. Find out which ones are corresponding to help you find your scale factor. Pause it here if you need a bit more time. Okay, and let's have a look at the answer to this one. So we've got two triangles. This time our corresponding side are the bases. Um, they're slightly in different orientations, but that's absolutely fine. Um, I can see that my angles are corresponding to each other. So I know that the base of one is still the same as the base of the other. So on the right hand side, which is the bigger shape, because I know it's got the longer base, the base is 12 centimetres and on the left hand side the smaller one the base is 8 centimetres so I'm going to find my scale factor by doing 12 divided by 8 now once again you'll notice that 8 doesn't go into 12 a whole number of times so you can either leave it as a fraction or this one simplifies to quite a nice decimal anyway um, which is 1.5 so I can say that my scale factor is 1.5 that means all the lengths of the sides of the shape on the right hand side are 1.5 times bigger than the ones on the left. So I'm looking for length P, which is on the bigger shape. So I'm going to have to take the length, the corresponding length of my smaller shape, times it by my scale factor, and it will increase it to whatever the length of P is. So on the left hand side, the corresponding side that I know is 10. So I'm going to take 10. I'm going to times it by my scale factor. So 10 multiplied by 1.5 is going to give me 15. That's a length. So I can put my units on there as well. Do a double check. That's from the bigger shape. So that side should be bigger than its corresponding side, which is 15 is bigger than 10. Let's check that we got our answers right here.
Okay, let's have a look at example four. So we have two arrows that are mathematically similar, so one's an enlargement of the other, determine the length x. So um, I'm looking for my two corresponding sides and that will give me or help me work out my scale factor. So you can see that the top of both of the arrows, I know both of their dimensions. So their corresponding sides on the bigger shape is nine and on the smaller shape is six. So if I do nine divided by six, that's going to give me my scale factor. Now, once again, um, that comes out as the same fraction. So I can either leave it as three over two or I can turn it into a decimal and put 1.5, which works fine for this question. So I can say that my scale factor is 1.5. That means the lengths of the big arrow are 1.5, one and a half times the length on the smaller arrow. Now, the missing side I've got here is on the bigger arrow, so I'm going to have to take the corresponding length from my smaller arrow, which is 8, so it's that slanted side there. I'm going to times it by my scale factor, because I'm making it get bigger. Um, I know that my answer is 1.5 times 8, times bigger than 8, um, so I do that multiplication, and I get 12. It's, that one is a length, so I can put units on there. Double check that my answer is bigger than what I had for my corresponding side, which it is. So 12 centimetres is the length of the new side. I'd like you to have a look at the question on the right hand side um, and to do a similar thing and to determine the length of the side X. Pause it here if you need a bit more time. Okay, let's go through the answer to this one. So my two corresponding sides, the ones at the top, so the bigger shape has a side of 12 and its corresponding side is eight. Um, so I'm gonna do 12 divided by eight and that gives me a scale factor of 1.5. It's actually the reverse sum up here, you might have spied. That is our scale factor, that's not our length. So that is how many times bigger the big shape is than the small shape. Um, I then want to find out the length on the big shape. So I know that it is one and a half times bigger than its corresponding side. So it is one and a half times bigger than the six centimeter side. So I'm gonna do six times by 1.5 and I'm left with nine. That is a length, it is a measurement, so you can put units on there. Let's check that we got our answers correct here. Okay, then let's have a look at example five. This is our last example. So triangles A, B and C um, and D, E, F are similar. Work out the length of A, C. So that when it says A, C, that means the side that joins up the point A and the point C. So it's that right hand slanted side. So first of all, to work out a scale factor, I need my corresponding sides. So from this one, I can see that my corresponding sides are those on the left hand side. So the bigger shape has the left hand side of 15 centimetres and my smaller shape has the left hand slant side of six centimetres. So I can work out how much bigger the big one is than the small one by doing my division. This is finding my scale factor. I do 15 divided by six and I get 2.5. That is my scale factor, it's not in centimetres. That's my scale factor, it tells me how many times bigger those sides are than on the small shape. Now, this one's a bit different to the examples that we've just done, it's um, more like our very first question, because this time we're looking for a side from the smaller shape. So I'm going to have to do the inverse of what I've been doing previously. So Last time I was looking for one on the big shape and I could multiply by my scale factor. This time it's different, I've got to go, I've got to find a side on the smaller shape, so I've got to do the inverse and I'm going to have to divide. I know that the side AC, which is the one that I'm looking for, scaled up by 2.5 times by my scale factor, um, gives me the corresponding side length of 20. So I know that AC times by my scale factor, which is 2.5, gives me its corresponding side of 20. So 20 is two and a half times bigger than whatever AC is. 
Now, if I want to find AC, I do the inverse of times by 2.5. Well, I know the opposite of times by 2.5 is divide by 2.5. So I do that to both sides. I'm left with AC on this side. I'm going to do 20 divided by 2.5, and that gives me 8. It is a length, so I can measure it. So I can put units on. So that one there is in centimetres. So this one I've had to do a bit more like the first question. I'm having to find a length on the smaller shape. So I'm going to have to divide. So do my reality check. I'm looking for a length on the smaller shape. My answer should be smaller than its corresponding side, which it is. 8 is smaller than 20. What I'd like you to do is have a look at the question on the right hand side. Um, you will see that there are three triangles in this question instead of two. Um, this one is a little bit trickier. Um, I will give you a hint that you will have to do the scale factor twice. So find out the relationship between, I would say, the big triangle and the medium triangle before trying to move on to the small triangle, which is where your missing side is. You'll have to pause this to give you a bit of time and then we'll work through the answer. OK, let's have a look at the answer to this question then. So in this case, we've got three triangles. Um, and if I have a look at my small triangle, which is where the missing side is, I'm looking for the triangle that has corresponding sides to both of those. Now, it's got the right hand side and the base filled in. Now, neither of the other two triangles have those exact sides with measurements on. So I'm going to have to um, do this in a couple of steps. So on the small triangle, I do have the four centimetre side on the right hand side. Now, the medium triangle on the right hand side has a corresponding side of eight centimetres. So I've got a corresponding side there. Now, the problem is that medium triangle doesn't have the corresponding side to X. Its base isn't filled in. So I need to think about how I could work out what the base of that medium triangle is, because once I know that, I can use my scale factor to find it on the small to find the equivalent side on the small triangle. So let's ignore that small triangle just for a second and we look at the big triangle on the left hand side and the medium triangle on the right hand side. Now if I wanted to find out the base of that medium triangle I can work out a scale factor because I've got lengths for both of the left hand side lengths. I know that on the big triangle the left hand side is 15 centimetres and on that medium triangle the left hand side is 5 centimetres. So I can work out a scale factor to get me from the medium triangle to the big triangle and vice versa. So if we look at the relationship between the big triangle and the medium triangle then I'm going to work out a scale factor. So I know the corresponding side, that left hand side on the big triangle is 15. Its equivalent side is 5 on the medium triangle. I do that division and it tells me that the scale factor is 3. It tells me that the big triangle, all of its sides are 3 times longer than that of the medium triangle. So if I want the base of that medium triangle on the right hand side of that image there, I need to find its corresponding side. Well, on that big triangle, I know its base is 21 centimetres. Well, I know that if I take the base of that medium triangle, let's call it Y for now. So that's the base of that medium triangle that I don't know. I know if I times that by my scale factor, which in this question is three, I get to the corresponding side, which is 21. So I'm still using the big triangle and the medium triangle. I'm ignoring the little one for now. I know that the base of the medium triangle scaled up by 3 gives me 21. Well, if I want to undo this and find out what y is, I do the opposite of times by 3, which is divide by 3. So I'm left with y over here, 21 divided by 3 is 7. So actually, the base of that medium triangle is 7 centimetres. So I can say that triangle has sides of 5, 8 and 7 centimetres. Now, this means that I can start to look at the small triangle. So if I now look, so I'm ignoring the big triangle now. 
If I look at the medium triangle and the small triangle, as though we're pretending it's a different question. I know I've got two pairs of corresponding sides. I know that the four and the eight correspond and the X and my newly found out seven also correspond. So I can work out the scale factor between the small triangle and the medium triangle. This is, it's as though it's a different question. Just because there's a different scale factor up here between these two other triangles doesn't mean it's the same for all three triangles. Doesn't mean the scale factor is the same. They are all similar, but it doesn't mean that they have the same scale factor between each pair. So let's find out the scale factor between the medium and small. So how many times longer are the sides on that triangle than they are on the small one? Well, let's have a look at the right hand side. I've got two corresponding sides. On the small one, it's four. On the big one, it's eight. So I'm gonna take eight, divide it by four. We're getting used to working out the scale factor now. Um, I know that two fours go into eight. So I can say that the scale factor between my small triangle and my medium triangle is two. So the lengths of the medium triangle are two times the lengths of the small triangle. Now that helps me because I'm trying to work out a length on a small triangle. I know that x, which is the base of that triangle, if I times it by two, if I scale it up by that scale factor, it gives me the corresponding length of the base. Now the base of that medium triangle I worked out up here, that's when I used y up there, um, was 7. Okay, So I know that 7 is twice as long as that side that they've called x there. So to work out what x is, I do the opposite of times by 2. I know the opposite of times by 2 is divide by 2. So I'm going to be left with x over here and I can do 7 divided by 2, that's going to give me a decimal, but it doesn't matter because I can have decimals in length, so that's absolutely fine. Um, I can work out that x, the missing side in my question of my small triangle, is 3.5. Now that's a length, so I'm going to put my centimetre units on there. That one is trickier, definitely, um, just because there are two steps to it there. Okay, um, what we're going to do now is have a look at a worksheet. So there are nine questions there for you to have a go at. Pause it um, so you've got time to work through each one and then I'll put the answers up. Okay, and here are the answers. Okay, so hopefully that video and the scale factor video together um, are useful in working out missing sides of shapes. You see it's not just triangles, it can be any shapes, as long as you've got corresponding sides, as long as you've got a pair of sides that you know information about. Remember, the only way to do maths, or the only way to learn maths is to do maths, and the only way to do maths is to keep practising it. Um, there's lots of questions available and uh, make sure that you're using that worksheet at the end of the video um, effectively and then checking your answers as well. Have a good day.